yes, I want you to look like you're in a movie. Not a 2D type Shot of movie, fired. but something that might end up on Amazon or Netflix. What is up? It is Professor Wedding, your wedding professor. Thank you for joining me today. Today, we're going to talk about how to get those truly cinematic wedding films or how to get it looking truly cinematic in your wedding film. It's a buzzword. It's it's talked about on YouTube. If you search it, there's like a, a million videos on how to get cinematic shots. And it kind of always goes down to people take different approaches, meaning either it kind of used to be get a, a longer lens with a shallow depth of field, like a 51.2, 81.2, 1.4. And that blur gives it that cinematic look. Um, I think now the consensus is that's kind of amateurish and that's not the true way to get cinematic looking footage. So I'm going to dive into a wedding we did a few months ago to show you exactly what I did to get that cinematic looking um, image. So this right here, let me play it. So this was, we did a little interview with the bride. And if this looks cinematic to you or doesn't, this is because this was kind of short on time. But we shot basically with window light coming from the right lighting her, giving that broadside lighting, giving the shadows on this side, in my opinion, making this cinematic. I'm not going to get to the audio too much, but I'm just going to talk about layering of light and what specifically tools I used um, to get that cinematic looking uh, video, film. So you can see dark, light, dark, light. That texture that that light is creating is what is one of the tools that makes it cinematic. Um, again, light, dark, light, all that stuff. That's the factors to create that cinematic looking image, light, dark lights coming from that side. We're shooting into the light. What are we shooting with? We're shooting with Panasonic, uh, S five Mark two with a 24 to one Oh five and a 51.8. I think this looks, looks amazing. And it's not just from the lighting, because for weddings, at least, we don't have time always to set up these big aperture lights to create the three-point lighting or to create that soft light that makes it beautiful. So oftentimes, we do have to use windows just like this, and you can see how it delicately falls on her face. But there's one extra thing that I use to get that cinematic look. Even this completely outside, completely outside in the shade. It still looks cinematic. So how are we getting that cinematic shot? Let's take this back. Let's go back to the bride in the room, in the in the room, not in the groom, because we don't shoot that. Let's go back to this. Uh, oops. Let's get this. So she's getting ready here. This was shot through a. Uh, a painting or a picture. So just a reflection. This was shot directly at her. And you can see there's that soft light coming from the window on this side. She's churning. It does look a little underexposed. And that's one of the keys, in my opinion, to make something look more cinematic. So let me take this look completely off. This is what it looks in log. So in log, it looks kind of, uh, I guess, flat, normal. So when we add this on, this uh, formula that we use gives it that that coloring. So if I were to if I were to uh, overexpose this, which you can with these Panasonics, yes, the back is blown out, but this doesn't look this doesn't look cinematic to me anymore. This looks like a amateurish wedding uh, video shot on a Canon T3i. So when I take this back down, that detail it's not a silhouette shot because we still see detail in here. When you have the this high dynamic range. It's what gives you that cinematic look as well. You're not blowing things out constantly. Um, it looks like a movie. To my eyes, it looked like a movie. When I showed the couple, they were like, damn, this looks like actual movie you watch in theaters. That's that's what I usually get from my couples. They're like, wow, it looks like we're in a movie. Yes, I want you to look like you're in a movie. Not a Tubi type Shot of movie, fired. but something that might end up on Amazon or Netflix. Now, I told you there's another factor that makes our pictures, our images uh, cinematic. And that is this little guy right here. What is this? This is not Black Pro Mist. This is the Cinebloom filter from Moment. So this is at 
I think I have two that are 20%, which is too much. Most of them are at 10% to cover all our lenses. And um, I do have black pro mist as well from Tiffin, but I do not like using black pro mist because I feel black pro mist is just too much. It's too much glow in the highlights, which makes it look kind of funky. And they're not always consistent, meaning sometimes the one eighth looks more diffused than the one fourth or even the one half. So because of that, we don't use Tiffin. We use uh, Cinebloom from Moment, and it, it looks pretty pretty freaking stunning, as you can see. Let me take the LUT off here so you can again see. See, there's detail everywhere. It almost looks like it's blown out here, but no, we still have detail. And I brought this down. Absolutely great, cinematic, lovely. We don't always use the Cinebloom filters, but um, at least for this one, even for the couple shots, look at this. Let's go to the couple shot. Let me show you. Um, all right, so let's take this here. Let's see. Let's lower this. Let's grab that. Let's do this. Let me find it here. So where was it? Where'd you go, buddy? Let's use let's use this one. So if I copy this and take it to these guys, where are they? Right here? No, right here. I'm gonna oops. I don't think I copied it. I copied the other one. So let's find it again. Where was that beautiful cinematic looking shot? Here, this one, uh, this one. She looks gorgeous in here. So I'm gonna copy this guy. I'm gonna go all the way to her on here. I'm gonna paste it. And if the Cinebloom, like most of these diffusion filters, lowers the contrast too much, that's fine. We'll add the contrast, contrast in. Let's go to this shot. Just FYI, I've shot with Sony and Canon, and you can do those with their newer cameras that shoot 10-bit. You can get the same thing. It doesn't have to be Panasonic. We just use Panasonic because if to me, it feels like there's a little bit more dynamic range. And the stabilization, we don't have to use uh, gimbals. We can just go handheld, be quick and nimble. Um, but sometimes I do miss the cannons, to be honest with you. But when I get teary-eyed and I miss it, I just, I carry tissues. So I take out the tissues. So if it feels a little underexposed, just, uh, again, it's 10-bit. It's Panasonic. We have enough noise to deal with, uh, to play with. Backlight, that's what makes it cinematic. Lights coming in from the back or shoot into the light. Use the filters, try to get that um, light, dark, light, dark type of look to the picture. That's going to make it more, look more pleasing, more cinematic. Get the movements that are intentional. If they're not intentional, then I probably won't use it. That's why gimbals, I think, sometimes don't work anymore because it's just a constant in, out, go around. It's predictable and it's overdone. They're not natural cinematic gimbal shots or movement shots. So that's what I would recommend to get your shots more cinematic. Get cinematic lighting. Get a cinematic filter to unsharpen, to bloom the highlights a little bit. Do those two things to get your shots more cinematic. Do those two things. Your next wedding, just aim for those two things. Use a filter. Even if you don't like moments, find a different filter to use. There's other diffusion companies out there. It doesn't have to be this or uh, Black Promise. You can use Glimmer Glass. That works as well. That's different, but it works as well. You can use a filter and use utilize lighting by learning lighting, by looking at lighting, by observing lighting. And it's a, if you're shooting at night or it's a cloudy day, then you do have to bring lighting. Hire someone to be your lighting person to light from the, the back or light into the lens or light from the side to get um, those patterns because... Even if we didn't have the sun here, we'd, we'd find lighting some way or another because obviously not all weddings are shot during a sunny day. This was Professor Wedding. 
Thanks for watching. These were my tips on how to get uh, actual cinematic looking um, shot for your next wedding. Subscribe, like, do all that good stuff to get more videos because we're trying to make that $7 a month on YouTube. That's our goal. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.